Hello and welcome to another recording for my channel. This is a continuation from the startup video I did for my Age of Discovery uh, video tutorials. So basically, uh, what I'm going to try to do is make this a tutorial playthrough for new players. Uh, my other playthrough for my Gem Hadar was just a playthrough to show you uh, certain aspects, but this will be more of a tutorial. So people who are new to the game, if you leave a comment down below, questions, I'm happy to do my best to answer them for you. Um, but as you remember from just the end of the last video, we have to collect a, uh, a shuttle and get a new uniform. So let's have a quick talk to Tilly here. Oh, no. Talk to Taylor, not Tilly. <laughs> anyway. I'm not the brightest. The main campus building. I'm not the brightest spark in the shed, so I'm sorry about that. It takes me a, it takes me a while sometimes to um, remember things. Okay, so you can see there. Little arrow, and as you get closer... The circle. So the Taylor is in there. This way. This way. Where's Tilly? I can hear him. Okay. She's not here. Okay, so let's see if we can change the uniform. I heard rumors about your recent exploits, Lieutenant Guff. I go for I can't even pronounce my own name. Congratulations on your recent promotion to command of a starship. I can help you adjust the details and particulars of your uniform within regulations, of course. This is a good time to update your uniform with your new rank and insignias. Thank you. Show me what's available. Is there anything else you need? Well, you didn't show me anything. Okay, so, um, if you're new to the game, you won't have all the availability that I have, because I do have um, unlocked, I have unlocked pretty much everything in the game. So let's have a look at the modifier. Oh, I still can't change my uniform. Hmm, huh. okay, well there's nothing I can do, I might as well exit out. Show unowned costume parts, so... Okay, where's cancel? There we go. Exit out. Okay, now speak to the ship vendor to claim your shuttle. Nice, it really suits you. I didn't do anything. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I find this stuff so funny. I'll show you how to get that in a minute. If you're wondering how to get this, I'll show you after I've done this. But again, everything's going to be time stamped, so you can find all those things. Wire ships. Welcome. Admiral Kensington said you would come by to requisition a new shuttle. While you're here, feel free to look at the other ships we have available for requisition. Thank you. <clears throat> sorry, my voice, my throat seems to be very dry, so I'm sorry if I'm coughing. <clears throat> and hiccup as well. I currently don't have any ships available for you, but I can provide information on what you would like to know. So I, I got the shuttle. Looks like you're all set. Hey, don't keep the admiral waiting. Oh, I did get the shuttle. Okay, there you go. So go back across the uh, quad, back to the uh, admiral's office. Oh, there she is. And as you can see, anyone who's running is pretty much another character. <laughs> Not currently a member of a a uh, fleet yet. I think you have to be level ten. I can't really remember, but I'll be into. I'll uh, send a invite to myself through another character. The admiral's office is this way. Congratulations on your promotion. I will let you know when I have a new task for you. Okay. Okay, so stun and damage there. Uh, is this an uh, uncommon weapon? So that, uh, common is white. Common items are white. Uncommon are green. So as you go up in level, they change color. 
And when you get an uncommon, uh, rare, very rare, and so forth, so forth onwards, you'll get uh, these sorts of things on the ends where it does a bit of extra stun or a bit of extra damage. And there are uh, quite a lot of different things to go through. So as I get them, I will actually show you what they are. Okay, continue. I have a mission for you. Secrets. So this should start the new episode arc, but I won't actually start the episode. I won't, so I won't do the episode. I'll start it up, but I won't actually do it. Oh. We have a situation at the Delta Volanus Cluster. One of our research stations there managed to get a partial distress signal off before it was jammed at the source. I need you to get out there and get eyes on the situation. The Klingons are getting bolder since they acquired cloaking technology. But an attack that far into Federation space is bold, even for them. Find out what's going on and render any assistance they might need at the station, if it still exists. Okay, and again we'll get some experience, get some armor, shields, and dilithium. Dilithium is the most important. Yeah, even energy credits. Dilithium is the most important in-game currency. I have a mission for you. Okay, so if you don't accept that mission, every single time you log in, it's going to pop up as a request. And it's just going to be annoying. So I'm just going to accept it and sit, sit there in the background, but I won't actually do anything with it. Okay, let's see. Don't have any points yet. Traits. Can't do anything yet. So as you see, as you get to the, uh, level up, you get to get more tra activate more traits. Um, as you progress through the game, you will actually acquire more traits to add to this. So, you can see I've only got six here, but I've got nine options. So, you will collect more. So, that's your ground traits, space traits, and you can see there's a lot more space traits, and again, as you level up, you'll get more. Starship traits. Again, like space traits, space reputation, which is, again, something you have to be level 10 or above, I believe, to start. Uh, ground reputation traits, uh, active reputation traits. So these are passive ones. I th no wait, sorry. Again, some of them are passive. Some of them you have to activate with your icons. Okay, what can I do? Okay, well, well. You survived. Then again, you survived fighting House Mokai. Admiral Kensington must have been a walk in the park for you. I guess this is goodbye. At least for now. You've got a ship and a crew to take care of, and I, well, I still have to graduate. Hey, do you think they'll use your ship for the cadet crews next year? If they do, put in a good word for me. I'll see what I can do. Ah, great. <laughs> hey, I liked being your chief engineer out there. It, uh, it would be an honor to do that again, Captain. Oh, man, this is hard. Uh, stay safe, okay? This war won't last forever. And I hope we're both doing what Starfleet does best soon. Exploring the galaxy, strange new worlds, all that. That would be agreeable. Live long and prosper, Sylvia. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the uh, ship, rec uh, ship uh, acqu acquiring area to see if I've actually got the ability to get other ships now that I've processed uh, the next level of uh, missions. Okay, um, and right after that I will activate my Age of Discovery pack and you can actually see uh, what you get with it. But I just want to do all the um, different things before I activate that. So you can get your ship ship equipment i think this is yeah change the look of your ship and then select a different ship that you have in your fleet acquire ships oh okay i can't do anything okay looks like i'll activate um my uh pack right here now okay so they've changed this around a bit Okay, this one's pretty much the same. Starter packs is something new. Uh, I cannot actually get this because I'm not a Romulan, so you have to have to be a, 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 a Romulan character to use this. 
Uh, this can be used by Romulans, as I believe, as long as you are Klingon uh, Alliance. Again, this can be used by Romulans if you're a Federation Alliance. Uh, temporal is only Federation. And Gamma, again, is uh, Gamma, but you can use the Klingon of Federation, I'd assume, the Klingon of Federation ship. Okay, you have to be level 6. Oh, I can claim this at level 60. Oh. That is weird. I'll claim it now. What did I get? Okay. T6 Jem'Hadar Vanguard Dreadnought. Playable Jem'Hadar Vanguard species. Oh, okay. So I can actually have a tactical uh, Vanguard as my Age of Discovery character. Captain. I'll have to check that after this video. I'll actually go back to the character character creation and see if that's in there. Okay, so you have to unlock that ship, particular ship, on your Vanguard character so that it will unlock on this character. Um, to get that ship, I'm not 100% certain, but we'll just have a quick look. Uh, it's not active on this yet. Okay, so this down here, it will have account wide, and you'll click on that, and it will bring up a list of things that you can unlock from other captains from doing spe specific um, uh, missions. Okay, so let's go back to here. So starter pack, Age of Discovery starter pack. It's normally uh, 1,500 Zen, which is this stuff here. So you don't actually get this in game. You actually buy this with real money, although you can receive it in game by swapping for Dilithium. So that's why I said Dilithium is extremely important in game. You have to use it to buy ships, you have to use it to upgrade items, and if you want to get real money uh, Zen to purchase these sort of things, you have to get in game Dilithium. And one Zen can cost a couple of hundred Dilithium. And again, we'll just have a quick look at the. Um, no, sorry, the exchange is through here. Exchange. So if you want to buy Zen, the cheapest you can get one for is 279 dilithium at the moment. And as you can see, it goes up. So if, you, if you've if you got Zen, and you want to buy dilithium in the game, if that's the way you want to collect your dilithium, is by spending real money to collect dilithium, you'll get one... Uh, you'll get 278 dilithium for one Zen. So for every 10 Zen, that's 2,780. And you know, for every 100, that's 27,800, and so on and so forth. You just move the decimal over a bit. Um, to do that, you've got to make sure before you submit, you make sure that you've got a sale for Zen is uh, one Zen, and you want to make sure that's 278 or above. Otherwise, you're just going to get 25 dilithium for one Zen. You want to make sure that you change this for 278, and as you can see, for one Zen, and then for 10, for 100, for 1,000. And the most you can do is 5,000. So we'll turn that to a 5. So at this point, the most you can get on the cheapest amount here, and as you can see, uh, the expensive amount is uh, 1,390,000 uh, dilithium for 5,000 zen. And again, I don't need that just yet, so I'm not going to spend it. I'll probably do this later on when I um, up, go to my next rank which is at level 10 so it'll be lieutenant commander i think uh let's have a look level 10 lieutenant commander gained this okay so yeah so when i get to that level sometimes some of the ships you get from your ship acqu acquisition is actually cost you um dilithium some will cost you zen which will be in the zen store which is ships here so as you can see, you can buy, um, you can get the original Constitution class, but if you want to get the Enterprise version, which is slightly better, has a uh, slightly more um, weapon slots and all that sort of stuff, a bit more power to it, you've got to buy it here. And as you can see, apart from the uh, Age of Discovery stuff that came out today, I've pretty much got everything all the way through. I think there was a level five, if I'm not mistaken. No, nope, maybe it was level six. And as you can see, I've got all the different available here. There you go. So pretty much it's like the ship you start off with, about two extra nacelles. It's a bit more um, battle ready, this one. 
as opposed to this one. So it's got, well, two more nacelles. So basically, yeah, this is the ship you're starting off with. But if you want to get the one that's slightly more powerful, so there's a uh, uh, shield modifier, weapon slot. So the weapon slots on my ship only have two forward and one aft. And we'll have a quick look at that. Oh, no, wait, 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 what happened to my... Oh. Okay. Okay. So two forward, one aft. But here, if you uh, buy the um, Zen Store version, it has four and three. But pretty much it's just a more advanced version of what you've got. Okay, what else? That's right. I basically went to the Zen Store to get the Age of Discovery starter pack. Um, so, uh, discount packs. Again, this is new. This was basically what they had all. Now they've actually got uh, different uh, bundles. So the expansion pack is every time they have a new expansion like the, the Romulan expansion, the Gem Hadar expansion, all that, they had new packs. I think this worked out to roughly 250 American dollars. So in Australia, 250 is worth uh, about 350 uh, with the current conversion rate. So as you can see, I've gotten them all. The mega bundles are when you get uh, the ships. So the, the three main fleets are the Federation, the Klingons, and the Romulans. So the mega bundles are when you get all nine ships. And then uh, faction bundles are when you get only the three ships for that particular faction. Um, so this will cost something like 2,000 Zen to buy. Whereas this will be six. Uh, 4,000 Zen to buy or some, something like that. It's a lot cheaper to buy the bundle of everything rather than getting them one at a time. Um, let's see, what else? Ships. Again, I've got everything except for the two latest ones, which are the uh, Age of Discovery. I've got all the ship packs. So if you want to see different bridges, I'm more than happy to sh uh, activate different bridges and show you them. Duty officers. Gamma Quadrant Duty Officers. So the way Duty Officers work is I can't show you until level 11. But basically you've got 100 to start off with. And you can upgrade that to 500. And the Duty Officers just do assignments to help you get extra points and dilithium and all that sort of stuff. Ah, uh, see you go. So you can, a limit of 4 or more gives you 500. Or you can do it at 25 each. And as you can see, um, that's 1,000 for 100 slots or 725. But if you wait... These always go on special, so like the ship here, it's on special for 20% off. You'll get that a lot. It happens two or three times a year where you can get it on special, so you're better off waiting if you want to. But you can upgrade it to 500 slots. Federation officers, Gamma Quadrant officers, as you can see, the Jem'Hadar, Vorta, Tosk, T Task, sorry. Cardassians uh, were part of the Dominion fleet, and I'm not entirely sure what all the, the Wadi, uh, another Vorta, another Cardassian. I think that's the... No, I can't remember. Sorry about that one. Once. But you can see there's different um, alien species. Klingon uh, and Romulan. So there's Remans, uh, Romulans, and... Um, actually, I think that's it. No. Again, see you see sometime later. Okay. These are on special at the moment, and I just bought a couple. So um, I'm happy to open up some lockboxes if you want to see what's in some lockboxes and see the benefit of them. Um, it's not pay to win, but it, it, it is, you know, a lot better to have these things active at some point. For the most part. So you can get one for 106. You can get 10 for 956. So you've already saved like a th uh, 100 there because you get one key for free, basically. And then you can get 20 for uh, 1912, which is... I'm pretty sure that's just double 10. But this one's a new pack, so... I'm pretty sure the 20 pack's a new pack. It normally only comes in a 1 and 10. So items are just things to help boost the game. These are... You don't really need to buy these. You collect these throughout the game quite a bit. Um, these upgrade your T5s to T5U, which is basically a T6 ship. Uh, fleet modules. Again, you, you'll need... Um, 
Sometimes you'll need Zen, sometimes you'll need Dilithium, sometimes you'll need Energy Credits, sometimes you'll need Fleet Modules, sometimes you'll need um, a mixture of all four, or two or three of them, but sometimes you need all four. So these are just to get the, the highest ranking ships in the game. Um, these you'll collect throughout the game, but if you want to early start hit a uh, powerful weapon, they're a pretty good collection. This is just four of these. Again, you'll collect a whole heap of them. The only time I buy these is when you get a special promotion like this, where it's um, for a limited time only. This special pack will include a universal tech upgrade. And I'll show you what that is. Oh no, it's on my other character. Ah, <laughs> never mind. Uh, but basically, you uh, can upgrade anything from the most basic equipment. So this thing here is a level 1. You can upgrade that to a level uh, 15 epic without any um, extra expense. You just use the token and it will actually upgrade it to the maximum. You want to save those sort of tech upgrades for the equipment you really, really want to upgrade as soon as possible. I like to just save them up, but I don't really use them all that often. I, I save them for when I really have something I really want to do. Okay. Bridge Officer is only available for Federation characters. I think I... Uh, thank you for... Blah, 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 blah. Only usable by Federation characters. Toss characters must be... So, at level 10, again, when I can unlock my uh, officers, I can get this guy. Again, level 10. I don't need the suit. Jem'Hadar variant. Keys. Delta Rising. Uh... Oh, that was, uh, if you bought the Delta Rising starter pack, you got this as part of that. This as well, Vanguard, Perfect World, Account, Link. That was actually a special promotion. You can't really get them all that often. Ah, oh, Temporal Officer, yep, yeah, okay. Services, again, this is where you, your, your actual captain, you can actually create more slots, but they give you quite a, a, quite a few. I've got 15... I can't remember if I actually activated any, but I've got 15 at the moment, so that's more than enough. Bank slots. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, start a pack. Your character can... No, no, not what's that. Uh, services. Available. Elite starter pack reclaim. Here it is. So because I got the Jem'Hadar starter pack, every character on my account will get this. So banks, uh, inventory slots, which are these things here, I will get another 30 of them. Uh, bank slots, I'll get 60 of them, which is basically like an inventory but a bank. So if you've ever played um, online gaming, you'll know that there are different things. A backpack and a bank where you can store stuff. And bridge officer slots. So that will be these here. So I will claim this, and you'll see that this will double, and I'll get two more epi slots here. Transmitted. And there you go, that's gotten more, and there's two extra slots. So there are benefits to paying, like, it's, again, it's not pay to win, because there's no winning, it's just fun game to play. But, you know, I'm more than happy to put the money into a game that has this much fun and quality to it. So, uh, that's just me. There are other people out there that put a lot more money than I ever will. <laughs> okay, again, bank slots, I don't really need them just yet. You'll probably say, again... You'll need these later on in the game as you get more and more equipment. So, again, by the time you get there, hopefully these will be on special and you can just buy them for 20% off. Bridge Officer Slots, you saw that I got two extra ones here. You can keep buying a whole heap of them over and over and over again. And it will... Basically, it, it takes up the entire page and that's where you stop. You can't go in any further than that. So it's like 20 or something Bridge Officers. Um, my Captain's name, a Gofidi. I can change that if I um, buy a rename token. But again, once I name my captains, I pretty much keep them as they are. Retrain tokens, that's for your skills here. Once you start using skill points, if you want to um, shift your science to tactical, you hit the, uh, the retrain, it, all your points will go back down the bottom here, all these will be blacked out again, and you'll just start. Because mine's a science captain, I will max out all my science, and the more points you put into a particular field, the more bonuses you get in that field. So I will be maxing out my science as much as possible, and possibly tactical, because weapons damage and um, shields are pretty important. 
So shields and hull and weapons output. So you want to, depending on your gameplay, you'll see what you want. So you got this, and then you've got a ground portion of it as well for weapons damage and healing. Okay, so that's that. Retrain token, four retrain. So I don't believe these are bound to the character. This grants a single character, a bundle of four, blah, blah, blah. I don't think this is a, a character bind, but just to be safe, just buy one at a time. Uh, what, once you buy that first one, if it says it's not a character bind, you can buy four. But I again, I have no re need to retrain. I basically set up my uh, captain and leave them. Again, character slots. You got four up the top, two down here. Dry dock. So, uh, when you get ships, when you get your next ship, this will stay in your fleet. So basically like your bridge officers, you'll have a list of uh, ships here with empty slots. So every time you get a new ship, a slot will be filled. And once you've got a certain, once that's filled, you start off with five or ten dry docks. You can actually put those ships into dry dock where they, you can't access them straight away, but you can actually swap them out for another ship. So if you want to go back and play with this ship at, at the end of the game, or you want to play through the entire game with just this ship, every time you collect a ship, you can just shove it into your dry dock and just use the ship throughout the game. Uh, so that's the way the dry dock works. Character slot, dry dock, uh, duty officer, roster slot. Again, we've already been that through that in the duty officer. Just that uh, it's a service as well as a duty officer thing, so that's why it's in two different things. Bank slots, outfit slots. Again, my captain basically wears the same outfit throughout the entire gameplay. I don't change it, so I don't buy these. Ship loadouts. So this is a loadout here. So once you have this loaded out the way you want, you can save it. And basically, it'll go through it here. You can save it so that every time you load that ship, if you use different ships, once you load that ship back, that ship will always load up with the exact same equipment. Ship slots. Again, uh, just like your duty officers, you can buy more shops, uh, slots for your ships. And again, there's a limit. I'm not entirely sure what that limit is, but uh, some of my accounts are maxed out. Account shared bank. So you've got a, a, a character bank where you can put excess equipment, and then you've got a shared bank which all your account users can uh, enter. Again, I don't ha I've, I've used it all up, I've got them maxed out, but I can actually buy bank slots for my um, uh, character that I'm on now. Boosts, that's this up here. So experience points, commendation points, fleet credit points, fleet mark points. Now it can't get to a fleet just yet, but basically whenever you click fleet marks, you'll get a bonus of 20% or so, where is it? Commendation, R&D, XP, XP, where's the fleet ones? Okay, so basically let's just uh, click on that. This item provides your character a 20% increase of amount of commendation points, maximum of 10. So, you'll get an extra 20, so you get a, a 12,000 instead of just 10,000. Know, so basically, you just get more points, it helps you level up faster, and that's what I will be doing, because I want to level up as fast as possible throughout the gameplay, so I can actually access the things quicker, and show you things earlier than normal. So 20% faster, basically. Uh, commendation point, R&D, again, something you can't do until you're level 50? Again, it's been a while since I've had to level up a crew member, so I can't remember. Um, doesn't actually say. XP boost, experience again, helps you level up. Gamma Vanguard, oh, that was when you built the um, starter pack. Appearance, again, I've got all the different things, so uh, all the different um, uniforms that have been released. Some of these actually come free with the game. Some of them you've got to buy. So that's, uh, you know, original series, original series, um, formal dress, uh, tunic, medical uniform, mirror universe. And then it goes all the way through to, there you go, 20. Oh, no, we're drawing military. So for Deep Space Nine uniforms, you can, again, separate them into factions. So your Romulans and your Jem'Hadar will be able to collect these if they are allied with the Federation. 
uh, Klingon, so your Romulan and uh, Jem'Hadar will be able to access this if they are Klingon uh, allied. Only the Romulans can get this, so the Federation and the Klingons sh can't, I think. Okay. Personnel. Again, bridge officer slots, Delta Rising. Okay, I will uh, get this. I'll activate this uh, right now just to get them. Transition. Duty officers. Claim. Okay, these um, are combat pets. So basically, you put them in your device slots here. And your bridge officers will automatically activate them. But if you have one, you've actually got to... Let's see if I can... Yeah. You've actually got to put it here and activate it yourself. And what it will do is it will basically transport it and attack the enemy. There are different types. Um, so you've got the crystal and you've got the lava or acid one. This one is a non-combat space pet. It follows you around. That's from Next Generation. Um, there are different tribbles that have different um, abilities that help you in different ways. And they're not pet uh, combat pets, they're just there so that uh, when you pat them, they give you a bonus to your damage resistance from a particular weapon's uh, damage or something like that. Um, Vanguard Bridge Office, I will claim that. Legacy of Romulus. So this one actually gives you two Romulan marks for your reputation. Okay, um, this one gives you uh, Dyson marks for reputation. Okay, and I can't purchase these until I'm level 11, I believe. Basically, they're a particular bridge officer. Uh, they're a race that have a particular uh, set of skills that help in different ways. And again, you can see... Um, let's have a look. Bridge officers. So, Reman only. Your character cannot use this item because it has to be a Romulan. It has to be a Klingon character. I can use this at 11-11. But uh, not just yet. Federation. Uh, that's a Klingon Borg and a Federation Borg. So, there are different aspects of that. Different uh, characters can use different uh, crew. You can only have one of these active at a time as well. So if you buy two, you've pretty much wasted your credits. Combat companions. Again, I have gone through that. Companions, these are just things that follow you around. But as soon as any fighting starts, they will disappear. These are... Cap uh, character creation captains. So if you want to be a Katian uh, Federation captain, you've actually got to buy this particular... Cap, uh, character model for that captain. Otherwise you can't play as that cap character. And then uh, the triples, I just explained what they do. Uh, Legacy unlocks. As you can see, once you've been on for over a year, you get this unlock. Let's claim that, because I haven't done that yet. Exclusive specials. Ah, oh, I, I don't think anyone actually uses that, so that's a bit of a... Yeah. Okay, so you get one free Horta. One free Tribble. Melee pack you get for free. And you can collect it more than once, apparently. Okay, that's a Vulcan pet. Basically a cross between a teddy bear and a tiger. I can't remember the exact um, joke. was. It was in the original series. Actually, no, I think it was in one of the novels. It's basically a giant teddy bear of claws. <laughs> okay. Original series. So, minimum command, lieutenant, crew of five. Oh, the shuttle. You get the shuttle craft. And you get all this extra stuff down here as well. Title. Exclusive lifetime account. So, basically, if you buy the lifetime account, you get these exclusive titles, which I don't use. Um, if you, you, if you test any of the upcoming content on Tribble, you get this. And this is a Tribble Borg. It basically, um, 
helps defend against uh, Borg attack. Okay, promotions. Again, this is a title. I don't really use them, but I'll claim it. You can collect these in game. This is just the basic board, basically Back to the Future hoverboard. Uh, but there are different boards you can collect them uh, by in game, which are a lot more advanced. So I'll just claim that. Is there any uh, available? No, I didn't. Ah, let's just claim that. I'm pretty sure it did. Ah, oh, there it is. Is that that one? I think it was. Okay, let's now finally get to this. Okay, I want to make sure everything's turned off so that I can just get into it. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So we'll get a prototype like cruiser scale with your level. One discovery. So when I go back to the ship guy, he should have a ship available for me. Yes, I do. So you'll see that this will drop by 750 Zen. There you go. So, Age of the Starter Bundle. So it doesn't actually unlock, it actually gives you a little box that's in your inventory now. Here it is. Age of Discovery Bundle. So once I open this, there should be a few items that appear in here. There we go. So I've got a Phaser, Sniper Rifle, and as you can see, they're a very rare. Oh no, just a rare. So they're more, they do more damage than the ones I started off with. So I started off with a Phaser, and a sniper rifle at the beginning through the tutorial. These are two levels rarer. They're still level one, but they are rarer and do more damage. Promo experience. Okay, so this will make my experience go up by, is it 20%? 50%. So that's this one here. Additional inventory slots. Part of a special promotion. Okay, so that activated on its own. And this is the tower grade tarot, tarot, I can't pronounce it. Okay, so let's put this, oh, it's already in there. Okay, so here you go, just click on it. Bam. Wherever you go, I'll just zoom out. It will follow you around. It's a creepy thing. I believe this is as I understand it, the warp engine for the discovery, if I understand that correctly. Now, if you sit around doing nothing for a while, it will actually, um, there you go, try to get your attention. So it's like a puppy. Okay, let's have a look at what else. So, this, um, just double click, double left click on it to activate it, and you'll see that this here will expand out. There you go. So I've got 150,000 points. So 50% uh, more experience points. So that will just help me get uh, level up faster. Okay. Let's have a look at the weapons. So once you hover over this weapon, it will show you this weapon and the weapon you've got equipped. Or the two weapons. There you go. Phaser stun pistol, rare ground weapon. Uh, okay. So it does... Almost four more damage. Stun. 1.3 more phaser damage. That's pretty much all it does. But that's only because it's a rare. As it gets up on level as 1, 2, 3, 4, that will also increase um, different aspects of it. So the sniper rifle does almost three extra damage. 25 bonus damage, target affected. Okay, this doesn't have the 25% bonus damage. Okay, it's got 6.7 extra phaser damage when you use the sniper shot. Okay, yeah. Okay, and I'll show you how these triples work. These ones can go on my crew. Oh, I didn't collect the lava one. Okay. 
Okay, so this one will activate automatically uh, in battle, hopefully. And these Tribble, now that you can see they've activated down the bottom here, let's see. I've only got one active, so if you've got this full and you need more, you click on this little icon here, and you hit 2. And as you can see, it opens up. Hit 3, opens up. I'm pretty sure that's all you can do, is 3. Um, if you want to swap this out, you hit the one above it, which opens up your skill uh, tree. And as you can see, everything here. So as you can see, you can remove things. But if you lock the tray, you can't accidentally remove it. It won't let you. So you can actually see that it will actually remove it. And if you want to, what I've just removed, I can actually put back by left clicking and dragging it over. And now it's back there. Now normally I won't have more than two open because uh, for ground you don't really have a lot of options but in space you have a lot more so I normally have three open in space. So we'll close that off. Now once you rub the triple, you'll see here I've got a Dyson Sphere Mark. I can't actually do anything with it until I'm level 50 because um, the marks, uh, reputations don't activate till level 50. But getting them early on in the game, you know, one one point adds up until level 50. I'm only at level 3 at the moment. So every hour on the hour, if you collect uh, these points, once you get to level 50, you'll have a, a bit of a start-up on your first um, particular mission. So if you want to get rid of this guy, if he's in the way, you'll just click on it again, and he'll disappear. Okay, that is the Age of Discovery pack. Um, doesn't seem... Uh, There it is, sorry, it was on the top before. Discoveries, dun, 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 title discovered, vanity pet. Already done. Okay, so this was a slightly sh longer, uh, slightly shorter video than before. Uh, but like I said, I just wanted to show you basic starting up if you're starting a new character. So let's see if he's got a new ship for me. Still nothing, I think. Yep, okay. So because I got that ship in um, the starter pack let's manage my ships and as you can s I didn't activate the bloody box uh, is this it I'm not high enough rank to do that yet I'm uh, not a high enough rank what's this not a high enough rank Oh, mate, I'm not a high enough rank to actually, um... I thought you got that ship automatically when you got the, um, pack. Not high enough rank, obviously. Oh, I haven't claimed it. Okay, so there you go, you have to actually claim it. Done. Okay, manage ships. There it is. So as you can see, it's a slightly different variant of the ship you all got. Light cruiser, light exploration cruiser. So it's just, again, it's just a little bit more power to it. And a, specially, a special um, universal console. Incoming damage heals shields for 20 seconds. That's pretty good. When damage when damage heals shields for 10% of that damage, that's pretty good. Lasts for 20 seconds, but has a 2 minute recharge. And as you can see, these are just basic level level 1, or not even level 1, they're just basic level 0 equipment. What you have on your other ship. This is an... Uh, I think it upgrades with you. Yeah, so that is quite a big difference actually so if you want to swap the ship if you don't want to use this because you find it you know you're getting a bit more difficult missions you want to go to the next ship up you just ready the starship and as you can see the, sh the ship icon just changes to that ship so now when you go to your uh, available 
crew and all that, the ship that's there will be the one that's active. Now let's just say, basically you've got to um, sell off, oh, all the equipment's gone. I'm getting equipment. Okay, so just say you don't want to use the ship anymore. You've got this ship, you have no need for this ship at all. You just go to dry dock, it will ask you if you're sure, you say okay, and it's gone. So where is it? If you want to, you can't find it, you go to dry dock and there it is. So you've got free 10 dry docks. So uh, as you upgrade your ships, you just keep dumping them back in there. So here, I've got two free slots, so I can get two more ships in here. That's including shuttlecraft. So you've got to be careful at the beginning of your game that you don't collect too many shuttles and then de therefore can't collect another ship. You dry dock, you can even dry dock the shuttles. So if you collect the shuttles and dry dock them, you can actually have one shuttle active at all times. The rest can be dry docked. And you can buy more slots for 400 zen. Again, there are always, um... Whoa, 305... 310 ships. There must be 310 ships in the game. Whoa. Okay, so you can buy 310. Five at a time, I believe. Yep, five at a time. So five for 400. 310. Whoa. It's four... That's a couple of thousand zen. But again, every now and again you'll get specials where it's 20 to 50% off. And actually coming up to Black Friday, Black Friday, Christmas, New Year, there might be a few good specials if you if you wait a month or two. You'll get a few good specials uh, from last year, I remember. So that's now my active ship. Um, I will f transport into space and show you the uh, bar down here. Yes. Okay, and this is something you've got to remember. I, even, I've been playing the game for 10 years or whatever it's been, and I forget. You have to remember that every time you get a new ship, oh, there you go, up to 10. Bam. You don't need that many. Um, so let's just bring this down to two. So you've got to remember that you've got to reset this every time you get a new ship. So we'll have a quick look at this. I will expand this out. Now, do I need to activate this? No. I don't need to drag this down here because it's a bridge officer. Beam overload 2. Beam overload 2. So you don't need to fill this up with the ones that are already here. That's the basic gist of it. Um, as you can see, there are two empty slots here. I'll get to that in a minute. But uh, as you can see, you, you don't need to have any of these down in here unless you delete these icons and then you can drag them down. And to do that, you just go to your settings here and rearrange HUD. So you can actually hide that. So when you exit out, it's no longer there. So you can bring this down here. And therefore, it cleans up the field a bit. You can get a bit more vision. Um, there's, no, there's no less overlapping and uh, less confusion for some people. I myself like to keep it active. Uh, just That's the way I do. And as you can see, it show. It doesn't actually delete it from the HUD. You can actually see it here. And then you just hit um, escape, you're back to the main menu and it's back there. So that's the way that works. To, again, to delete it, you right click, drag it and drop. So these things here, you can see they're right there. Again, you don't need these if they're here. So just for me, I just clean this out, make it completely empty and it's done. So these four here are these four here, so you don't need them. Um, that... Again, also, if you have something here and you think, yeah, I don't need it, you don't actually have to bring it in, but, you know, I do. Um, distribute shield power. So if you click on this, that's what that does. It distributes the shields throughout equally. Um, emergency power to shields is right here. Emergency power to weapons is right here. Evasive maneuvers is a passive uh, skill. So once you hit that, your ship will just rock and roll and move around a bit, so it won't actually get hit as much. Full impulse is basically this, so you don't need it. Again, everyone's got their own playstyle. All this phaser and torpedo here, that's your weapons. So you don't need most of that. Uh, rot uh, rotate power shields forward, left, right, and back. Again, if you click here, your shield power will go there. So as long as you know how to use this, clicking in the middle will do all four. Clicking on one of them will activate that particular shield to give it more power. So you don't really need any of these here. 
Tetrion Beam, right there. Torpedo Yield, right there. Tractor Beam, right there. So really, at the beginning of the game, all I need are, th are these two. And they're both... Uh, for defense rather than offense. So anything that will help me attack, I normally put on the bottom. Again, everyone's got their own gameplay. Anything for defense, I'll put on top. And on the rare occasion I need three, I will, you know, put something up the top. Um, again, if you don't like your setup, or like if you are playing and you think, ah, the way I play, the weapons aren't good here. I need the weapons above me and the defense below. You just go up to the uh, next tier, go down to the first tier. What happened there? There you go. So now the weapons would be up here and the debuffs would be down here. So that's the way you can change it. And again, there are 10... There are 10 uh, different things. But again, you don't want to be covering the screen with them. So you want to try to keep this as small as possible. Also, um, if this is too much for you, if like you don't like it here, you go back to your HUD and you can actually move it. So let's escape out, and now it's up here. So you can move it around where you want. I'll put it back. Uh, is it that one? Ah, there it is here. So as you can see, when I'll egg, uh, hit escape, you've actually got it here now as well. And as you can see, you can bring that down. And again... Oh, I can't hide this. Okay, well, there you go. So you can actually delete this, and again, it will say new, bring it back here. So you can actually do all sorts of different things. You can rearrange everything on your HUD. Um, these are targets, uh, friends or pets and other targets. Your crew, notifications, notifications, again, notifications. Pause status, so if there's a pause button here, it actually tells you how long you got because you can only pause for a certain amount of time and you can unpause and save that time for later so using the HUD is really easy straightforward if you screw anything up I don't know if there's a reset button I'd have to assume there's a reset button but I don't see it hmm oh yes there would be um, options Why can't I move this? Oh, there we go. You have to click on the bar there. So, let's just drag this down. So, basic options. Uh, enable direct... Uh, uh, I've got everything on that I need on because I've got a pretty powerful computer at the moment. Okay, so this screen will change depending on which... Uh, uh, Faction you choose. So as you can see, everything changes color. Gorn are green. Klingons are reddish. Federation is blue. And there you go. You can change. So that's Federation. Slightly grayer blue. 23rd century Federation. A golden color. Let's just go with default. I don't. I don't mess with these things. I like how they set it up. Don't need to worry about that. Overall volume. I found in my last playthrough that the the voiceovers were a bit low, so you can bring that up, bring it back down. Voice volume you can bring up to 100%. So you can change the volume. So if you want to bring this up, but it bring everything else down, that's all right as well. Uh, voice chat. I cannot get this to work. I've got a microphone, everything set up. I haven't disabled it. Mute out of focus. I haven't disabled it. Voice volume. Microphone volume, game volume when talking, open microphone, I did that, that didn't work. Okay, I'll apply that again. Display. That's basically the window it's doing, the full window. Uh, full screen, window maximize, blah blah blah. Brightness, basically gamma, makes this brighter or darker. Um... Brightness, no. Graphics. So, it's on, it's on high, it's on high, on. High, high, on. So pretty much everything's maxed out, because my computer has got the latest video card, it can actually do that. 
And if you look at some of my earlier videos, it's nowhere near as crisp as it is now. Like, the video card really makes a difference when playing games. Um, software cursor, minimum, reduce, boom, boom, texture, detail, frame rate stabilizer, auto stabilizer, uh, multi core rendering, limit frame rate to 120. Apply that. Controls, region space control. Ah, free camera, here it is. So basically, whenever you follow, when you follow a target, Whenever you shoot at a target, if it goes around the back of you, the camera will automatically find it and focus on the ship. So when you do this with your mouse, as soon as you let go, the camera will slowly come back into focus on whatever is um, your target. Whether it be friend or foe. So if it's target, if it's uh, 20, 000, uh, 25 uh, kilometers away, it will still focus in on it, on that direction. So that's what I want to keep. I want to keep follow target on. Uh, enable camera shaking. So basically, when you get hit, the camera will shake. Reset inactive tab target. So whenever you hit tab, it changes a target. Uh, so if you've clicked on a target, let's see if I can find. Actually, I'll also move this out of the way. As you can see there, I click anywhere on the map, it unselects it. Only attack if target is selected? No. Because then you'll actually have to find a target. You could be sh hitting this and it won't actually find a target until you select something and then fire on it. So you don't want that on at all. Select... Uh, uh, only attack if selected. You want that off. Um, select auto target on attack. So basically if something fires on you and you haven't already got something targeted, it will actually target it for you. You want to keep this off as well. I was playing uh, one of the missions. Um, again, I can't play any of them until I'm upper levels. There's a mission in there where they shoot torpedoes. If you have never auto target objects, it won't actually fire on the torpedoes and the, you will actually lose the mission. The whole point is to destroy the torpedoes before they destroy other things. So you really want to have that turned off. You'd want this turned off as well, because so, sometimes the um, the shuttles that are launched from the ships, if you're a carrier, are the pets, and you want to fire on those pets if they've got specific um, buffs and debuffs that you want to get rid of. Uh, first, target threatening enemies first. Eh, that's a bit iffy. That means I think that means the basic, the most powerful enemies, but sometimes you want to pick off the smaller ships first, because. The amount of time you spend killing the mothership, the little ships can kill you off. But if you take out the little ships first, you've only got to contend with the mothership. So that's a bit iffy depending on your character. But again, if you're firing on the mothership, you just hit tab and it'll find another target for you. Select attacker if attacked. No, you want that off. You don't want to be swapping between ships as different ones are attacking you. Targets. Tabs? Yes. You want that one on. Because if you've got nothing in front of you being a, and something's behind you, you want to uh, be able to hit tab. It'll The camera will spin around and you'll be able to attack it. Keep moving during dialogue. Tap, move, it, blah, 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 auto attack. Okay, that's space. Ground. Let's have a look. Uh, shaking, full, blah, blah, blah. Always face forward, yes. Actually, no, you can actually turn that off so you can actually face the camera. Otherwise, the camera will always be over your head. So no matter where you turn, the camera will always be behind you. So you don't want to have that on unless you're doing a uh, over-the-shoulder sort of gameplay. Always turning when facing target. Yeah, this is target. Select target. Only attack. Uh, da, 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 da. That's so it won't lock on. Yeah, ground combat's different from space combat. There are different things you got to do. Did I miss something here? Keybind. So basically, if you want to change it, so it told you to go forward, you hit W. If you want to change that to E, and... 
or whatever to have your own sort of gameplay, this is where you do it. Also, you can have W and E go forward. You know, you can actually um, bind two. Pretty sure you can bind two keys to the same. Oh, there you go. Second bind up and down. Okay. Where's the um pickup? Control enable face, always face, reset, click, I only select assist minimum, never HUD. Show player title with name, so that's basically when you So this here, so you can actually see the title, the name of the person, the ship and the name of the person. Players damage floaters. So basically this will just show the damage bar there. Uh, I'm not entirely what that sure what that does. I think it's basically when you have the um, playing in a group, you have your hey you have your bridge officers there. You'll actually have the ships in your fleet there. Show miscellaneous damage floaters. I don't really... That's just going to take up screen, so I just don't show it. Well, you can see that when their bar is actually... Um, when they get damaged, it'll go down, and then when their healing will go up. So you don't really need that. Um, show creator. Hide trade tool tips. Okay. So, I'm going to turn off the tutorial. So, from now on, I'll just tell you what's going on, rather than um, having the tool tips pop up. Show astronomics. So that's this here. Oh. Not gonna do it. Okay, show distance. Show enemy name again. So as you can see here, it says Earth and it has all the ship names up here. That's what this one does. So again, targeted. So if it's targeted, you'll actually see that bar. Or always. So all the ships, you can see all the damage, so it's up to you how you want to do it. That really will take up a lot of space. Um, if you have all the, especially mines, they, they set four mines at a time. And you can have up to eight, eight uh, fighters out there, so it can take up quite a bit of space on the screen and be overwhelming. So you want to leave that off. Um, always, duh, 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 again, different uh, gameplay, show friend names always, yep, again, team members, your officers, other players, enemy players, I can't find that one single option, where would it be, okay, Okay, so basic. Oh, here it is. Enable auto loot. You want that on. So what that does is when the enemy dies and they leave a loot box, as soon as you click on take item, you'll get it. Otherwise, when you click on it, it says take item and then it says are you sure. In battle, you just want to pick it up and go and move as fast as you can. Okay, I think this is way longer than I anticipated for an introduction video. Um, the next video will be the actual mission, Secrets. And let's have a look if I... Nope, it actually won't show me anything. Okay, so basically I have to finish these three missions to get to the next phase. So this, those other three missions we did, uh, what were they? Uh, Trial by Fire, The Shadow Nose, and Children of War. They were the tutorial missions, whereas these are actual missions. So I'm Assuming that once this is done, you'll actually get into the actual uh, Stow Online community gameplay where you'll be able to do all the different episodes. Um, they've really updated and changed everything there is about that particular aspect of the game as well. So we'll see how that plays out once these three are done. Depending on how uh, long these take, 
I'll either do a one long video for all three of them in there, or I might have to do uh, two or three videos separating them. But I'll try to play through them fast, while also explaining what's going on, and um, showing everything I can. Okay then. Once again, this is the end of this particular video. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. I'm more than happy to take criticism. I just ask that you keep it civil in the conversations down below. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.